Hey guys and girls and welcome back to episode 5 in this series where we are building a GraphQL API with Elixir. So what we're going to do in this episode is implement the GraphQL layer in our API um, and we're going to need a few packages for that. But before we do that let's start a new branch so git flow feature start and let's call it implement AppSynth. All right, so the package that we are going to need to uh, implement the GraphQL layer in this API, um, AppSynth is the GraphQL toolkit for Elixir and we're going to need three packages. The main package, which is called AppSynth. So let's copy that and paste that in here. Then we're going to need a comma. The next package that we need is AppSynth plug. 1.4 as well. And the last one, it's not required, but makes things a lot easier. Absent Ecto. So let's paste that in. Save it and then run mix. Ooh, mix steps.get to download the packages. I think I have them in my cache already. Oh, missing. Oh, okay. So let's first implement uh, our endpoints so that a client can connect to our server. Um, so if we go into your lib folder, medium GraphQL API web, and then in the router file, what we can see is that we have an endpoint or a scope called API, and we're gonna need an endpoint in there. So the way you do it is by saying forward, and then as a string, you provide the endpoint that you want to open up, which is going to be GraphQL. Um, we are going to need absinth.plug. So every connection is going to be plugged through absinth. And we're going to need a schema, lowercase. And we don't have it yet, but we can specify it. Um, we're going to say uh, medium GraphQL API.web dot schema and we're going to build that in a second. Um, so this is the GraphQL endpoint. So if we go to um, uh, our localhost slash API slash GraphQL, we will hit this endpoint and we're going to need another one because um, AppSync plug comes with a really nice graphical user interface to actually uh, play around with the data in our app. Um, but we only want that in development. So what we can do is say if mix.environment and let's go back, mix that environment um, is equal to dev. Then we're going to run this function. And we're going to pretty much do exactly the same as up here. But we're going to tell it not graph for call, but graph with an I, graphical. Graphical, graphical, uh, and we're going to use the um, absent plug dot, and I hope it would auto complete, but it's not. Um, I think it's graph e and capitalize the Q and the L. I think that's it, and we're going to use the same schema as well. So let's save this. So now we have two endpoints, but if we run mix phoenix .server, we are going to get an error that we don't have a schema file. Function medium GraphQL API. Oh, yeah, because we need to remove this. I forgot about that. Let's try that again. So this is a little bit of a rough cut because I ran into a problem. Um, and I've never had this before when I uh, worked in other projects. But at the moment, if I go to more error view, um, at the top it's using the medium GraphQL API, the view. Um, and when I try to compile it, if I run mix phoenix.server, it's gonna try and compile the uh, project and then tries to run the server. I'm getting an error that says, module medium GraphQL API.router.helpers is not loaded, loaded and could not be found. 
which I've never had before. Um, and I can't find that much detail about it online. And it took me too much time. So for now, what I wanted to do is just comment it out. What the two files in the view folder are doing is whenever we don't hit the endpoints that we defined in our router, um, it's going to serve up these two views to tell us that uh, we can't access them and why uh, we can't access them and display the error. Um, but for this project, it's not that important at the moment. Um, so I just made it to do and counted it out. Um, I'll save it. And if I run mix phoenix.server now, we get the error message that I was looking for, which is um, medium graphical API dot schema is not valid. It's not a valid exit schema because that's actually what we have to make. Um, so I'll probably look into this this week. I'm not sure why it's doing this because I've played around with multiple Phoenix projects and I've never actually had this because this is all code that was scaffolded out when we started the project. Um, and I'm not sure what changed. I really don't know. I looked online. There's not a lot of information about it. So I'll look to, into it this week. But for now, let's just continue and work on our schema. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that we commit our changes first. So I'm going to stage this and this with a message. Um, at absent packages. Stage the router file at graphql endpoints. Stage that and let's say to do. fix compile error in error underscore view. So now that our git branch is clean, let's finally set up our um, schema file. So the schema file is going to live in our medium GraphQL API web folder. So let's make a new file and call it schema.ex. And by convention, this of course is going to be a dev module, um, which is going to be called our application name. So medium graphql api dot schema. And this is a web folder file. And the way I like to look at our um, schema file is as a recipe for um, our GraphQL layer of the application. So we need an ingredient list and we need to tell our GraphQL layer how it needs to handle the ingredients. So let's first um, import um, absinthe, absinthe.schema, so we can use the functions. And below that, we're going to uh, import types and types are like your actual ingredient list. So the data structures that you want to work with in your GraphQL API. Um, so in our application, it's going to be a user. It's going to be a, um, a blog post, a comment ingredient. It's like a data structure that we need to define and tell GraphQL, okay, this is a data structure and this is what it's going to look like. So we need to import our types and below that we are going to define to our GraphQL API, how to handle the data and um, what to do with the data. So there are three things that, that we can do in a GraphQL API. We can query data. So we can say query do, and we can mutate data. And we have subscriptions and we'll get into that later. Uh, subscription do. So for now, I'm going to uh, comment this out because we're not going to use subscription at the moment and we'll implement mutations. I think it, uh, we'll probably do it in the next episode. But for now, let's focus on the query. 
so query is um, getting data out of our database, but not actually changing it. Mutations are when we actually change data. So if you want to update a user, delete a user, um, make a new user, um, and subscriptions, it's an open connection to our database um, that detects whenever a change is made and pushes it to our client so that we can seamless stream data. Um, but we'll get into that later. So for now, let's focus on the query. But at the moment, we, if we want to query things, our GraphQL API doesn't know what to query because we don't have a data type. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. We're going to import our first type. So let's just um, commit our data at the moment. If we go into our terminal and look at the get status, we just have our schema file. So I'll just say uh, git add everything git commits. Uh, set up schema file and we'll push it to get up git push origin the uh, no not develop the feature branch implement absent there we go um, so that is it for now in the next episode we'll set up our first data type we're going to implement the user type and the user input type and we'll I'll explain to you what that is in the next episode. Um, but thank you for watching this episode. Uh, I hope to see you in the next one. And if you like this episode, leave a comment below if you need some extra information or if you have comments on the previous episodes. Um, let me know what you think of it. Um, and I hope to see you in the next one.